welcome back to another full coverage mini series for beginners part five wow we are rolling through these videos now today is the day today is the day that we will be putting some stitches into our project at last it's super exciting stuff i can't wait to get started however there are just a few more things that we do need to touch on before we start racing along with the stitching. These are important things, people, so don't, don't skip this bit, okay? Please don't skip this bit. So when you have got your chart, I want you to have a little look through. Look at the number of pages you've got of your chart. Because we need to decide where we're starting. Now, obviously, me being me, I always start on page one. On full coverage, it's different to some other stitching in the respect that page one will be your top left-hand corner. So imagine that you're reading a book. If you open the book, your top left-hand corner. That's how these are charted. And depending on how many pages you've got will depend on where your next set of pages land on the chart. So if you've got a particularly big chart that is long, so it's like landscape, you will find that it will have more pages across than it will down. But then obviously you need to work out what your pages are. Now, this is where Heaven and Earth have sort of done everything for you. So you don't need to sort of play some sort of guessing game that you don't know where the next page is. So let me show you on mine. So up here you'll see that it will say page and then whatever page it is. But then you'll see over here in this next, in the corner, that there's a number in brackets. And then at the bottom of the page, she says, you will see again that there is numbers in brackets. The numbers in brackets are representing what comes next. So for instance, this is our top left-hand corner, page one. So we're gonna stitch page one. Now, when I get to here, that two in bracket means that the page that comes next is page two. But I might not want to go across. I might want to go down the page, in which case my next page is whatever this number says down here in this corner. Okay, so just, have a little look at your charts or your, your, your chart pages and you will notice that each page will have numbers in brackets. The numbers in brackets are telling you what page comes next in orientation of the page that you're actually working on, okay? The other thing you need to be aware of when you're stitching, once you've completed page one, which you're gonna do you know, without any problems whatsoever, and you're gonna to get to the next page. I'm gonna blow this up just because I don't want you to see all of the chart. So for instance, we've stitched page one, okay? I'm gonna show you the top section. So just pretend we've stitched all of page one, and we're over here. So this is our, this is our last square, okay? If I now show you my phone, which is page two, you will notice that there's a section of it that's been greyed out. These are repeating squares. So you don't stitch these because these are the last three squares on the end of your last lot on your previous page, okay? So wherever, it's sort of highlighted with a, with a gray mark. It's basically a duplicate of the last, however many it shows. So for me on there, you can see it's three squares in, there we go, three squares in is highlighted in like a, a dark gray. That means that that is the last three squares of the page before. So I don't want to restitch those. I only want to stitch anything that is white. So anything that's got a white background on it is going to be stitched. Anything that is greyed out 
it is basically a divider to show you what your last three stitches were so you can orientate yourself just a margin bit more so that is what you needed to know about your chart so we know we're going to start on page one page one is going to be our top left hand corner not everybody will start their charts in the top left hand corner at page one some people prefer to start their their full coverage in the bottom right hand corner for instance each to their own but then they won't be starting on page one they'll be starting on their last page so I personally just go with whatever's the easiest option and that is page one up here okay because I know I'm starting in page one I need now need to work out whereabouts on my fabric I will start my stitching and I know it is my top left hand corner now I want you to go back to your little calculator again and just double check one more time. I know what you're thinking, like, oh God, Teresa, I don't need to check again. No, I've already checked it, but you do. Because here it is, I've rechecked mine, it's 13 by 22. I've cut my fabric to 13 by 22, but I'm reminding myself what size border I said I wanted. And on here, I said I wanted a four inch border. Now that border is basically just giving me some wiggle room. One, if I slightly miscount or I mismeasure slightly, sometimes it can, it can make all the difference. Um, and two, I like to have lots of extra around the outside so that I know whichever way I decide to have this finished, there is lots of extra fabric around the edges for them to do whatever needs to be done. What I don't wanna do is end up finding that I've only got maybe an inch border and it's really, really tricky for anyone to frame it or finish it or whatever. So I always steer on the side of caution. You tend to find that if you've added a four inch border, if you did make any slight like marginal measuring errors, you would still have plenty of room to sort of fix the problem because you would have so much fabric either side. So, because I know that I wanted four inches extra, I have now measured across four inches. Here we go. She says, I can't see it, can you? I have measured across four inches and I've just put a pin in. And I put the pin in the nearest, the nearest line that main line of my grid. Then all I've done is got my measuring tape, like so, and I've measured down from my pin. So there's my pin against that line. I'm measuring down four inches, and you'll see all I've done is stick another pin in. Nothing fancy, but by coming across or in four inches, and down four inches and putting that pin in there now tells me that is the square that I need to start on, on that corner. That is the top left-hand corner of my chart. So I've now got my fabric so I can see exactly where I need to be and where my stitching needs to start. So if you're stitching in hand, then obviously that's where you're gonna start. But because of the type of stitching that I do, which you're all going to witness shortly, um, I have to have mine in a frame or in something. And the reason that I do that is because I use a parking method. I can't imagine doing parking in hand, but that's not to the, the amount of comments that I've had about the amount of people that do actually stitch in hand is like, wow, wow, they're super clever people. So I don't stitch in hand. I use something. I'm going to use my scroll frame for this project, but for the per demonstration purposes, because obviously I know that a lot of you won't necessarily have scroll frames, or if you do, you won't have the same as me. There's no point in me showing you how to put it on there. Here is a Q-snap. Now the principle will be the same no matter what you're putting it on. What you need to make sure of, keep your pins in. Or keep at least the pin in where it's telling you where you're going to start stitching. You don't want to put your pin right up against the corner. 
like that. Because if I turn this round, if you're right up against the corner here, you're not going to have enough room once this wraps round. And before you know it, you're going to end up in a bit of a mess. So you want to make sure that when you're putting it onto whatever frame or cue snap or hoop, that you've got a little bit of edge room. So I'm going to pull that top pin out because I know I'm in the right place and I've got my pin in where I do actually want to start stitching. Now I don't want it too close to the top and I don't want it too close to the side because if you do that, you are going to make it just a little bit more difficult for yourself. So I'm going to stick the two opposite ends on. So that way I've got plenty of room at the top and I've got plenty of room at the bottom. And then I've made sure that I've got enough room on the side. So I'm going to put my side ones on, she says. Number one. And then we're going to put number two on. Like so. And our pin is still showing me where my start spot is. And you will see I've got plenty of room at the top, I've got plenty of room at the side. And on the back, nothing is in the way of this pin, which is where my starting stitches are gonna be. Okay? So you don't wanna put it too close to the top and you don't want it to put it too close to the side. You wanna have it so that you've got enough space around it to be able to get your stitches in without obstacles in your way. And it doesn't matter whether you're using a Q-snap or a hoop or a scroll frame. Just keep that little marker, whatever you've used, just keep that little mark on there so that you know when you're putting your fabric onto your frame, into your hoop, onto your Q-snap, onto your scroll bars, you can still see where you're going to start stitching. You don't need to worry about getting it all on and then thinking, well, I don't know where I'm supposed to start because I don't know how far down I needed to go or how far in because we've already did it. It's right there. Okay? So I think we're ready, people. It's time for a spot of stitching. So let's head on over. I'm going to go and set myself up and put my material on my scroll frame and we will see each other momentarily. Okay, so... Here we are, and hopefully you can see this. Um, small disclaimer, people. I did actually try recording this um, once already and was stitching away, chatting away to you, only to find out that the camera had switched off. So I've had to unpick all this and start all over again <laughs> because I... You know, a lot of people said, are you going to show this from the very beginning? They didn't want to see it when it was already sort of in the throws where you've already got stuff parked. So, as you can see, I have my Annie's Keepers all here. I'll just put these off to one side for me to play with. Um, I've got my chart. I've got my needle minder with my needles. And we've got a little portion of the chart so that I can show you how we get going. Um, so for the total new beginner, you don't have to do this parking method. You could just finish threads, but you will see what I mean. It will become very apparent very quickly that if you're just working in little 10 by 10 squares or even 20 by 20 squares, if that's what you wanted to do, um, you would be constantly ending threads uh, unless you're prepared to go what's known as cross country stitching, which on these sorts of things on gridded fabric if you're great at counting and you know you're accurate then it gets yeah, fine um, but for the purpose of beginners and for those that want to do the parking method I'm going to show you this way because this is the way I taught myself this is the way I learned how to stitch um, and really it's the only way that I do know how to stitch I can't stitch cross country I can't go outside of my grid lines I just cannot do it <laughs> so I'm going to show you my way. My way is not the right way. The right way is whatever you choose it to be. 
but if I show you how I do it, then you can adapt and tweak and change to your heart's content to make it all work for you. So that's enough of me waffling and rabbiting. Let's get to some stitching. Okay, so let's get some of this stuff out of the way. So I need this one because we're going to stitch using that colour. And we're going to move that out of the way and we're going to move this out of the way. Now, I know you can see a portion of my chart and um, under normal circumstances, we would never share any information from a chart. It's just a big no-no. We have copyright and, you know, it, it just shouldn't be done. But for the purposes of this video, I'm showing you this little section so that I can show you the chart itself, how we park and how we mark our threads so that it makes it easier. So, but you wouldn't be able to stitch this, this project with this tiny little portion of chart. So I'm gonna zoom you in a little. As you can see, <laughs> see this little splodge here? This is where I've already stitched this once and now I'm stitching it again for you. Um, but yeah, we won't go there. Okay, so first of all, we want our first color in this top left hand corner. So I'm going to pick my first colour which is 520. I'm going to show you how I do it on my Annie's Keepers and as you can see that one the, the loops the wrong way around. So I need to flip this because I wasn't well enough prepared. I always take my thread from this from this little bit here. So you'll see that I've got it just one, I'm just pulling one. And then what I'll do is as you pull, it ravels. But it just slides out. So nothing else becomes upset. So just to add fun, normally I would only stitch um, one strand on a 25 count even weave but because I wanted to show for the there seemed quite a lot of interest in the the loop method so because I was gonna because I'm showing you this I thought I'll do two strands on 25 count so that I can show you the loop method so basically I've got a piece of thread that I've just pulled I've put the two open ends together to create a loop we are going to thread our needle with our two open ends like so and there we go so let me zoom you in a little and let's take a little look at these grids so when working on gridded fabric I'm sorry about all this moving around when working on gridded fabric you will notice you have the grid line all the way around the outside. Oh, that's not very good, get rid of that. Come on, move. Um, I always make it so that my first, my first square is here. So it's on the, the inside of the first grid line and just underneath the first one. That should be better so that you can see. So let me zoom you in so that we can see this on the grids. So when looking at the grid on even weave, it's all much, much clearer on ADA. So for those of you that are working on 18 count or 20 count ADA, it's not quite so difficult. So this is a square. So four holes is the equivalent to one square on our chart over here. Now, with any kind of stitching, <clears throat> doesn't matter whether it's a full coverage or anything else, you have to decide how you're gonna do your crosses. So when we say how you're gonna do your crosses, so are you gonna use your bottom left-hand hole to always be your start point? Or are you gonna use your top left-hand hole? Whichever way you decide to do this, it needs to be consistent. It's something that you need to do all the time. You can't change it because when we get to the point where we start parking our threads, we're always gonna be putting our thread 
into what would be your start point of your next cross, okay? So we're gonna stitch over here. Let me move this in a little so you can see what we're doing. There we go. So we're gonna stitch all of these these symbols, little spaceships, I suppose you call them. So when working with the loop method, although our starting leg is gonna be, in my case, the bottom left corner of each square, to start, to start a length of this thread with a loop on it for a loop start method, I'm actually gonna put my needle in the top right-hand corner of my stitch, and I'm gonna put it down but not pull it through because we want to catch this loop. It's at that point I will now bring my needle back up at my start point, which for me is my bottom left corner. And if you're following along with me, yours will be your bottom left corner. Then we're going to catch this loop like so, bring it down, and I just put it straight back down my start leg again. So that will be whatever my first, my first leg is. So there we go. Then, then we finish our square by doing the second leg. There is our first, our first stitch, people. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so should we start doing some stitching and counting? Okay, I'm gonna zoom you in a little. So we've done one, and basically what you're gonna do is, if you're working in a 10 by 10 block, like I am, I am going to go through this chart or this, this little square here because this is my square that I'm working on and I'm going to stitch every single one of the spaceships of this colour because that's the colour that I'm using. So I can see there's one at point 10 over here, so in the 10th square. So we know that this is one over here. So my next square along, although it's got a thread in it, is the starting of square two. So I just count across. So now I know that that's in square 10. This is square one. So two, three, four, five, six. Oh. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is where the next one goes. And again, starting in my bottom left hand corner because that's where I start. Go up to my top right corner and then back down and do my bottom right corner up to my top left corner. And there is my second stitch. Now you will notice, this is something that you will orientate yourself with. If you're using a gridded fabric such as this, you will notice how your grid sits. So you will see that Number one stitch sits inside. It's the first row in from my grid line. And you will notice that number 10 is sitting on the grid line. So that, that grid line will disappear as I stitch. That's a great orientation going forwards because if you know that you're putting something in over here and you've got something to put in number 10, you don't always have to count now because you know your number 10 is on your grid line. So sometimes if it's one to five, I will count this way. But if it's number eight, I will just go to my number 10 and count back two. So orientation, it all becomes very apparent as we go, but that's how I sort of work mine. So let's go over here. So we've got another one here on the third row down of our spaceship. So I'll come underneath number one and go number two, that's row number three, and it's one, two, three, four, five in. One, two, three, four, number five. So we'll do another stitch there. So all I'm doing is going through this little 10 by 10 square and stitching that symbol. So one, two, three, and then there's one, right, so Diagonally down is that one, and diagonally down again 
is that one, so there's another one. And I think that's it for that symbol. Now, this is where it all gets a bit interesting, people. So let's just zoom you out a little. So you will see over here, this is how we do it. So when working on paper or on an electronic chart, doesn't matter which, I will use two different colors. So I will use one color for my stitched squares and I will use another color for my parked squares. So I'm gonna to resort to a highlighter, but I'm gonna highlight the park threads and I'm gonna use a pencil to mark off what we've stitched. Okay, so what have we stitched? Let's zoom you out a little. What we'll zoom you there? So we've stitched this one here. I've stitched this one here. I've stitched this one here and I've stitched this one here, okay? So that is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? That's what we've stitched. Now, now normally I will look to my, my square below and see if I've got that symbol. If I've got that symbol below, then I will park my thread in its place ready to start the next one when we get there. Now, unfortunately on this chart, it's not a great example for me to show you this because it's not actually there. However, if you look over to the right, there is one lone spaceship over here. So because I've already got this threaded and I've got a nice big long length, I'm not gonna to wanna to finish this thread when I've only got four stitches in. If I know that over here, Bearing in mind that this is the start. This is, you know, there isn't gonna be any starting threads. There's no threads gonna be in here waiting from something above. So I will park my thread over here in this space. So when we're parking, all we're doing is putting it as if we're holding, putting it into a holding space of where you would start stitching it. So imagine this is like when you're cooking and you, you might be one of those people that likes to have everything pre-measured and in a bowl ready waiting to go as you start adding things to your mix. This is all we're doing. We're just adding it to our mix so that it's there ready waiting when we're ready. So let me zoom you out a little bit because I've just realized you can't see the chart. So you will see on the chart here that this is our spaceship. You can see here that this is our, our parked thread that we've done. And we know that this square here will be number 10. So all we need to do is count across two more. So that would be number one of the next square. And this will be number two of the next square, which is our flying saucer. So that is the start point of that next stitch. But because we're not working in that square, I'm gonna pull it through and then I'm gonna pull my needle off. I'm gonna just anchor that somewhere out the way, like so. That, people, is your first parked thread. So what I will do is I will highlight my parked thread. All will become very apparent. As you can see, that's just made a complete hash of that there, but this is the problem when you work with a highlighter on a printed, a home printed. So you might need to come up with a different plan. Normally I would use coloured pencils, but do you think I can find a coloured pencil anywhere in my house? No. Okay, so our next one, our next one is the number eight. So let me find out what my number eight is on my, on my key. And again, we're going to, Take a thread. So literally, grab him on your needle and just give him a pull and he'll come right on out there. And again, because we're doing the loop start, we're gonna 
thread our needle with our two open loose ends to give us our loop at the end so that we can start our next thread. So we are working on these, we're gonna work on these eights. Now there's no hard and fast rules of how we do this. Now, like I said, because we're, we're starting our new thread, we're not working with one that's already existing, I'm gonna put my needle in the top right hand corner of my square. Well, my square is the square that attaches to square one. So I will go up to my top right hand corner of my square, bring my thread down, hold that loop and then I will come up in my hole one, which is my left bottom, my bottom left square or hole. That is my start point. So we catch our thread and then I'm gonna take my needle back down into my bottom left. That is my first leg and my thread is attached. So I will just finish that square, I'll finish that cross, so up at the bottom right, into bottom top left. So there's our square two of our new colour. So now all I do, and there's, like I say, there's no hard and fast rules here. You can see I've got two more eights down here. So I won't necessarily do each stitch singularly. So this one, I'll do that bottom leg of, of the first one, and I will do the bottom leg of the second one. And then I'll go and do the top legs of those two. So they are stitched. And then I know I need to count, oh, count across two. One, two. This is count across three. One, two, three, four. So then I've got two more eights in there. One, two. The first square is always the hardest square because there's nothing in there. You've got no part threads, you've got no orientation. Okay, so then we're gonna come down here and we've got two more here. We know that that's our number 10 because we've already got one in number 10. So we're gonna go, there's number nine of that line. And you, it doesn't matter how you do this. You don't have to go line by line. You could go all over the place. There's no, there's no set way to do this. And because it's full coverage, we don't really worry about what the back looks like. So you can literally go berserk. You can go wherever you like, whatever takes your fancy. There needs to be no, you don't have to have a, a sort of way of doing it. Uh, where are we? One, two. Okay, so that one comes down here. One, two, three. So we're gonna do three in a line. There goes one, two, three, so there's three. I've got another eight that needs to go second one in. So he's gonna go in there. Okay. Um, we've got another one that's gonna go in here. because that's our number 10 there. And then we're gonna come down and across one, which is here, and down one more. So there's one, two, there's three. And then one, two, so we'll put, and you'll notice I'm now just, just doing bottom legs, 
just so that I can get them in so I know so I can see where they are and then I'm going to come across one okay so that's all my eights and now I just need to go back over these with the second leg Okay, so that is all of our eights completed. So when we look at our chart here, I'm going to go in with my trusty pencil and mark those off. So that one stitched, those two are stitched, those two are stitched. So you just go through, oh, I think I might have forgotten, no, I didn't forget one. So you just go through and you mark off what you've stitched. I'm sorry if you can hear grunting, it's not me, it's my little fur baby next to me. He does love to make his presence felt. Okay, so we've marked all of that. That's everything that we've stitched. So now we need to work out where we're parking, if we're parking, because we can only park if there's something there that's nearby. So we can see straight away on this next square down that there's no eights, but we have the same situation as we had before. We're in our very top square of the next row and there is a lone eight there all on his own. And because I've got this thread I know that it's the next one in from the one that we already parked. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to park this one over there. Under normal circumstances, we wouldn't do that. We would only park, well, everyone's got a different way of doing it. Me, I like to park beneath, like underneath. So if I'm, if I'm working on this square, I like to park going this way, downwards. So I would either park in this square or if there's something in this square, I would park in there. If it goes much further than that, then I won't park it, I'll end the thread. But because we're starting at the very top of our design, if I've got anything that needs that could go in this square, I will do that. As we work further down, I wouldn't because there will be parked threads that are higher up that potentially could be waiting to go into those slots. Okay, so we now need to mark where we've parked. And this time try and do it without making a mess of it, which it does. But basically we'll mark that there. I don't know if you can see the markings. But I will use a highlighter for my park threads and I'm covering up in pencil what I've stitched. Okay. The next one. So the next one is this symbol here. I might have to speed through this for you, just to speed it up a bit. Okay, now for this colour we can see that I've completed the colour in the square but that this colour isn't in here, it's not in here and it's not in here. So at this point we need to end a thread. 
Mm. We've stitched everything in the, in the local vicinity. I won't go much further than, like I say, two down. And I would only put it really in this top one or this one, and it, there isn't one in there. So I'm gonna flip my work over, hopefully not knock you out. So here's the back of the work. See, it's a mess, but it doesn't matter. And all I'm gonna do is stick my needle in anywhere and pull it through. That's it. I'm not going to secure it any more than that because you don't need to. Because by the time I've covered this more with other threads, it won't go anywhere. So let me flip it over again. Here we are. As you can see, I've got my blankie on my legs, people, so I don't get cold. It's cold today. Okay. So now we need to mark our chart for the stitches that we've completed. So we've stitched all of that, all of that, that one, that one, those ones, that one. And we didn't park anything, so we've got nothing to mark as a park thread. So what's next? Um, let's go to Let's go to these squares. Okay, so we've got a pop of colour here. So our next colour is pink. Yay! Something other than green. Okay, so, so we are starting with these here, these squares. So that is not that one. It's the next one down. So I'm gonna put my needle in my top right corner because it's a starting thread. I'm gonna bring it up in its actual starting point, which is our bottom left. Bring it down, catch my loop, and off we go again. So there is the first leg of my cross, I've got three in a little cube here. So I'm going to do all the bottom legs. Like so. And then I'm going to go back and do their top legs. So we know that this is our row 10 because we've got one marked off on row 10. And because we know it's the number one, we've, this is our number one start point. So you don't need to count. You just follow it across. So that is our 10th row on row 10, on column 10. Uh, oh dear, column one, row 10. Okay, so. That is all that colour stitched in that square. So let's mark that. So we're marking these two, plus that one, those ones, this one over here, and then we're marking this one here. Now, you can see from the little chart she says, let's move you up a bit. You can see from the little chart that we have the same symbol in the square down. So this is where we park. We're actually gonna park where we're supposed to park. So we're gonna bring our need, so we know that this is my starting leg of my next, of my next one. So it's row one which is this one, and it's my bottom left corner. So that's where I would start my cross. So I wouldn't put it over here because that would mean my starting point would be bottom right, and I would have to go to top left, which is not how I start my stitches. My stitches always start in the bottom left. So that's bottom left. This, imagine this is my cross. So there, to there, to there, to there. So because this is my, 
this is my starting point of my next cross, I park that thread in there and then just take it off the needle and we keep him out the way. And he will sit there like that. So let's zoom you back out. So now you can see we've got the two park threads over there, but that's only because we had nowhere else to put them down here, but we had two lone stitches. This is our parking. Now we've started our parking. To be honest, this chart so far has not been particularly helpful to try and explain this to you, but I think you're sort of getting the idea. Okay, so now we need to mark that with our highlighter as a park thread. There we go. So I've highlighted that to say that there should be a thread in there that's ready and waiting for me. So what's next? Um, so let's do these. What else have we got where we can park? Uh, we've got the diamonds, haven't we? So let's, let's stitch some diamonds. No more diamonds. So we need to park our thread. So again, we look at the one down and we can see straight away that underneath this green one, our last one there, there's a diamond. So we're gonna bring our needle up in our starting leg of that. So it'll always be in the bottom. So if, if it's the top row, then it will be our top. Imagine that that is your square, that is your that is your cross, always in the bottom left hand corner, wherever your bottom left star is, is where you're gonna park. So we're gonna park that thread as if we're gonna start that stitching, but we're not, we're just gonna take the needle off. So don't get overly complicated, don't overcomplicate the way you park the thread, because I think that's the biggest thing. People are like, well, I don't know where to put it. But it's like, well, Imagine you're about to stitch it. You would know that you would need to put it into the bottom, into the bottom left-hand corner of where you're gonna start your cross. So imagine that you're about to stitch it and then just take the needle off. That's the easiest way I can, I can describe it for you. Okay, so I'm gonna go through now because you can see how this works and wherever I'm gonna stitch off camera and wherever I'm gonna park, if there's some parking that goes on down here, I'll switch the camera back on because otherwise I'm gonna bore the life out of you all. So let me crack on and get some of this done and I will come back to you. So as you can see, I've done just a margin bit more. So I've got another park or another thread to park. So I've been working on these symbols, which are these ones here. Let's zoom you in. Jesus. So these are the ones we're working on. So you'll notice that as we come down, those symbols are in this square down here, which is where we want to be parking our threads. So I know that it's the second row in, a second column in. We know that we've got a park thread already in, in point one, which is great because it's highlighted and there's a park thread. So it helps with orientation having park threads as well. So, okay, so that's that one there. So that's number one. And I want one, two, three, I want number four down. So one, two, three, four. So that will be our start point of that color in the next square down. So I'm gonna pretend I'm about to stitch it, but I'm not, cause I'm gonna take my needle off. And I park that too. So now we've got three, three lots of park threads. So I will whiz off. Don't forget you need to mark your chart. Really fudge. Sorry people, I know that sounds disgusting. My poor doggy has got heart condition, so. Okay, so we're gonna mark these off as stitched. Like so. And then we're gonna use our highlighter to basically remind ourselves that we do have a park thread 
right there. So I'll go off and do some more and then I'll come back. So I'm back again and I've just stitched some more and we're going to park another thread. So this time we're going to park our thread. So we've, we've just stitched these little sunshine things, she says. Although I've missed the sunshine thing. Um, so that's Z. Two, three, uh huh. One more goes in there. Little sunshine thread. And now we want to park him. So where are we going to park? So moving these out of my way, so I can see that I parked that one there. So I can come across one, which is this hole, and then come down one, two, three. So one, two, three. And as if I'm going to start him, but I'm not, I'm going to take my needle off. There's another parked thread. So I think you're getting the idea of how we park. So then we'll mark it to say we've parked it in highlighter. And we'll cross off everything we've stitched. Okay. Do some more people. Okay, so I've stitched just a couple more and we've got another park thread. So we're working on the Zs. So I've stitched this Z here and I've stitched this Z here. So now I need to park him. Now I know I've got a stitched version there. So underneath there is there. So I'm going to come across one and park my thread and then I'm going to highlight to say there should be a thread in this square. Okay, what's next? I do a bit more and come back. So you know what I was saying about you need to test stitch, test stitch, test stitch. Well, I have to be honest with you, I've been doing this on a 25 count two strands as you can see because I wanted to do the two strands so that I could show you how to do the parking because the parking bit is important. But I have to be honest, I can't stand the way this is looking because it's just too, there's too much, there's too much material or there's too much floss that I don't think that it looks tidy enough. So as you can see, I've got my park threads here, which is how it looks, and I'm filling in my gaps. But I don't like the way that the fact that the, the stitches look too squished, and they're not particularly pretty looking stitches for me. So I wanted to show you this video so that you could get going for those that want to do two strand and to show you how you do your two strand and how you start the parking system. But I'm actually going to now go and unpick all of this and then do the same thing in single strand on a 25 count even weave and get you sort of to this point so that I can continue because I cannot stitch two strands on 25 count I don't like the way it just turns into a bit of a mess for me. But this is my point about test stitch, test stitch, test stitch. It's not, you can start stitching it and then you find that it's not working for you. You need to know, hence the reason for the test stitch in a whole 100, 100 squares or 100 stitches, like a whole block, to really see how those stitches look. I'm not happy with how that looks. I think it looks a bit messy. My stitches look very messy. So I'm now going to unpick all this 
and try and get it back to almost identical in single strand so that I can show you going where we go from next. <laughs>